Hello? Uh, okay. Where were we? Mono red. Mono red. Okay, first up, we have Amber Bristle Omal. Three and a red for a 3 3 dwarf cleric legendary creature with haste. Whenever Amber attacks, you may discard your hand. If you do, draw a card for each player being attacked. Who's a background? Again, with all of the myriad creatures and all of the token makers, you're looking at, you know, attacking a bunch of different players. So if you have one or two, say, shitty cards in hand or just cards that aren't going to help you in your current situation, you discard those and you get to draw more. For each player being attacked. So basically, you only get to draw three max at any given time. But still, for four mana and a 3-3 three, three haste dwarf, uh, my brother's going to love this card. Going to be good. I don't know if you build a commander deck around it, but you definitely include it in a dwarf deck. Uh, next up, we have Amethyst Dragon. So this is the standard dragon cycle. Four and a black, four red red for a four four flying haste dragon. Um... Which is pretty decent. It has a sorcery adventure on it. Explosive crystal, four and a red. Explosive crystal deals four damage divided as you choose among any number of targets. You can kill four one ones or two two twos or one four four. That's pretty decent for five mana. Not bad. Not a lot of things have more than four toughness, so five mana kill a thing. It's pretty good. Even five mana kill multiple things. That's even better. That's, that's about a par. I like this dragon. It's also, it's amethyst. It looks really cool. It's got these like floating crystal main things. Pretty neat. And then we've got the ancient dragon for red. Ancient copper dragon. Four red red for a six five flying elder dragon. With whenever Ancient Copper Dragon deals combat damage to a player, roll a d20. Again, same as all the other Ancient Dragons in this set. Um, so you roll a d20. When you do, create a number of treasure tokens equal to the result. You pair this up with, like, Delina or any of those cards that let you roll multiple. Uh, Barbarian class. Um... There's a blue fey creature that lets you roll two car two die and then pick the higher one. It gives you advantage on die rolls. I can't remember what the name of it is. Anyway, all of the ancient dragons are above par. Um, some of them are probably going to stand out more than others. Um, I think so far the treasure, the treasure one in red and the draw one in blue are probably the two more prominently playable ones. Uh, we've got Balor, three red red for a 5-5 five, five mythic demon with flying. Whenever Balor attacks or dies, choose one or more. Each mode must target a different player. So you have three opponents most of the time in Commander. Uh, with Balor, you can target all three of them, one with each of these. Your options are target opponent draws three cards, then discards three cards at random. Interesting. Target opponent sacrifices a non-token -to artifact. Or Balor deals damage to target opponent equal to the number of cards in their hand. Interesting. That's a fun card. It's mythic. Got some interesting stuff on it. It's five mana for a 5-5 five, five flyer. So automatically it's par. I think that's pretty good. And then... The additional um, attack triggers is just good. Good in general. Uh, Bowels Invoker, two and a red for a 4-2 Dragon Shaman with Scorching Ray. Another eight mana activated ability. Bowels Invoker deals four damage to each opponent. It's not bad. It's not great. Uh, Bowels Invoker, I will say, is on par. Next, we've got Blood Boil Sorcerer. 
Three and a red for a 3-3 human shaman with whenever blood boil sorcerer enters the battlefield, take initiative. It also have, has crown of madness. One and a red, sacrifice an artifact or creature, go target creature. That's pretty cool. You can go as long as you've got artifacts or creatures to s sacrifice. Which if you're playing red, you probably do. I would say that's par. Maybe a little bit above par, but leaning par. Breath weapon, two and a red for an instant. Breath weapon deals two damage to each non-dragon creature. That's intense. So you're gonna wipe out most tokens. You're gonna wipe out most goblins. You're gonna wipe out most low to the ground elves. Um, yeah, it's interesting. Three mana to do t two damage to almost everything, except for dragons. Uh, and that includes your stuff as well. So, uh, Breath Weapon being a draconic ability, it makes the most sense that they would make Breath Weapon a dragon only spell. I would probably avoid putting this in your decks if you're not playing mostly dragon creatures but who knows maybe you just have this in your back pocket and you know hopefully you can bump up the things you want to survive past the the two damage mark i would say it's par i think in the right deck with the right brewer it's an above par card Next we have Carnelian, Orb of Dragonkind. Two and a blue two and a red. I don't know why I keep wanting to say blue. Um So this is also interesting because we've we've had some drag orbs of dragonkind, uh, but not one in every color so far, so it's not really a cycle. It's an artifact, you add one red mana. If that mana is spent to cast a dragon creature spell, it gains haste until end of turn. I mean, that's only powerful if the dragon it's talking about doesn't already have haste. If you're playing red, a lot of your dragons have haste. I would say this is below par. Caves of Chaos Adventurer. Three and a red for a 5-3 human barbarian with trample. Five power with trample. That's pretty good. Um, whenever... Oh, the adventurer cycle. That's the um, initiative... Plus, if you've completed a dungeon, you get a bonus thing cycle. Uh, when Caves of Chaos enters the battlefield, take initiative. Whenever Caves of Chaos adventurer attacks, exile the top card of your library. If you've completed a dungeon, you may play that card this turn without paying its mana cost. Otherwise, you may play that card this turn. I mean, all of the adventurer cycles have been uh, pretty good so far, so... I'm going to put this one at above par as well. Coronation of Chaos. Two and a red for a sorcery. Up to three target creatures can't block this turn. Goad them so they can't attack you next turn. Um, That's par. Let's say... Yeah, three mana, three target creatures can't block this turn is par enough. Then you get to goad them on top of that. That's a bonus. Descent into Avernus. Two and a red for an enchantment at the beginning of your upkeep put two descent counters on descent into avernus then each player creates x treasure tokens and descent into avernus deals x damage to each player where x is the number of descent counters on it so it's a continual burn um spell but this is basically full game ramp if you've ever played green you know how ramp feels this is burn ramp plus group hug. Everyone gets treasures, but everyone takes increasing um, damage. It's interesting. So this is like the, the clock. I've set the clock. The game's only going to last X amount of more turns. This is going to make things move real fast. 
Uh, the next is Dragon Cultist, four and a red for a legendary background enchantment. Commander creatures you own have at the beginning of your end step. If a source you control dealt five or more damage this turn, create a 4-4 four, four red dragon creature token with flying. Pretty good. Earth Tremor, three and a red for an instant. Earth Tremor deals damage to target creature or planeswalker equal to the number of lands you control. That's, pre that's pretty good too. Above par. Uh, El Turil Survivors, three and a red for a 04 Tiefling Peasant. Trample and Myriad, so whenever it attacks one player, you can make a copy that attacks other players and then sacrifice those copies at the end of uh, your combat phase. As long as El Turil, El Turil, El Turil Survivors is attacking, it gets plus X plus O, where X is the number of lands defending player controls. Interesting that there's like a couple of land cards back to back. Uh, then we got Fang Dragon, five red red for a six three flying dragon with an adventure on it. Fork Tail Sweep, one and a red Fork Tail Sweep deals one damage to each creature you don't control. Pretty good. Get rid of all the chump blockers and uh, play your six three flyer. Uh, Furbolg Flutist. This is the first Furbolg we've seen so far in this set. We've only got a few Kenkus so far. And this is our first Furbolg Flutist. Um, hopefully in green there'll be some more Furbolgs. Very forest nature dependent. Oh, pardon me. Uh, so... Furbog Flutist Flautist is a uh, four red red for a four four giant bard with enthralling performance. And Flautist enters the battlefield, gain control of target creature you don't control until end of turn. Untap it, it gains haste and myriad until end of turn. That's pretty cool. I'd say that's above par. Fork Dragon Adventure is sorcery or instant? Um it is sorcery. Sorcery speed, deal one damage to everything you don't control. Not too bad. Uh, moving on, we've got Fireball X Red for a sorcery. This spell costs one colorless more to cast for each target beyond the first. Fireball deals X damage divided evenly, rounded down amongst any number of targets. Well, this is red doing red damage things, dividing it up, conquering. Ganax Astral Hunter, four and a red for a three four legendary dragon with flying. Whenever Ganax Astral Hunter or another dragon enters the battlefield under your control, create a treasure token and choose a background. Not and choose a background. It also has choose a background. Um, this is this is par. It's fine. Five mana for a three four flyer. Okay. Um, whenever it or another dragon enters the battlefield, create a treasure. Also okay. So yeah, it's okay. Uh, we've got Ganassi Enforcers, one on a red for a 1-3 Elemental Shaman with Myriad. And then you can pay one on a red. Creatures you control named Ganassi Enforcers get plus one, plus O oh, until end of turn. That includes your uh, Myriad copies. Um, you attack all three opponents, you give them a little buff. Not too bad. Knoll Warband, five and a red for a five-five Knoll. The spell costs one less to cast for each opponent who was dealt damage this turn. It has Menace and Myriad, which means the Myriad copies also have Menace, which is a pretty cool uh, interaction, actually. It also costs one less to cast for each opponent who was dealt damage, so if you 
swing with a bunch of myriad creatures the turn this turn and then play this on your second main phase you know this gets kind of cheap there is let's see if you attack all three if you deal damage to all three of your opponents then this is two and a red this becomes three mana for a f five five with menace and myriad that's pretty great actually and it's only uncommon that's above par guild artisan one and a red for a legendary enchantment background commander creatures you own have whenever this creature attacks a player if no opponent has more life than that player create two treasure tokens so whenever you attack um the player with the most health with your commander you get two treasure tokens uh, we've got gut true soul zeal zealot two and a red for a two two goblin shaman legendary creature shaman goblin shaman uh, whenever you attack you may sacrifice another creature or artifact if you do create a four one black skeleton creature token with menace that's tapped and attacking and you get to choose a background so just aggro red golems you've never seen it before this is new and obviously kidding I don't hate gut I think cuts uh, pretty good pretty fun looks like he's got a heart in his hand there so pretty scary Oh, they reprinted Hoarding Ogre, so for three and a red, you get a 3-3 three, three Ogre, and whenever it attacks, you get to roll a d20, and depending on what you roll, you either get one treasure, two treasures, or three treasures. Pretty good for red, do you like treasures? Genius Artillerist, two and a red for a 3-1 Human Artificer. Whenever one or more artifacts enters the battlefield under your control, Artillerist deals that much damage to each opponent interesting probably par a little below par maybe inspired tinkerer inspired tinkering four and a red for a sorcery exile the top three cards of your library until the end of your next turn you may play those cards create three treasure tokens you get access to three cards and three free mana to spend to cast them that's pretty par to me very playable uh, insufferable balladeer oh no one and a red for a 2-1 dwarf bard my brother is gonna eat this shit up vicious mockery whenever insufferable ban balladeer enters the battlefield target creature and opponent controls can't block this turn and it's goaded and he's just like a look at this little dwarf boy just jamming on his loot pretty good if you ask me Javelin of Lightning, one and a red for an artifact equipment. Flash. When Javelin of Lightning enters the battlefield, attach it to target creature. You control. As long as it's your turn, equipped creature gets plus two, plus oh, and has first strike. Then its equipped cost is four. You get one free cost um, when it ETBs, and your creature gets plus two, plus oh, and first strike if it's your turn. Not too bad. Um, yeah, so you want to declare attackers, wait for them to declare blockers, and then flash this out and attach it. Give it first strike. I like combat tricks in the form of equipment. It's fun. Next up, we've got Carlac, Fury of Advernus. Four and a red for a 5-4 Mythic Tiefling Barbarian Legendary. Whenever you attack, if it's the first combat phase of the turn, untap all attacking creatures. They gain first strike until end of turn. After this phase, there's an additional combat phase. That's pretty cool. Two combats and you get to um, attack with everything twice because this untaps it. Pretty good. Pretty good, very aggro. Lightning Bolt. 
Oh, is that the titular Boulder's Gate? For one red lightning bolt deals three damage to any target. Yep, that's lightning bolt. Uh, we've got Levan, Cultist of Tiamat. Oh, two and a red for a 1-3 Dragon Shaman. Whenever you cast a non-creature spell, target creature gets plus X, plus O until end of turn, where X is that spell's mana value. That's pretty good. You can beef up your dragons with your dragon. Nemesis Phoenix. Three... Watsy loves their phoenixes right now. Every set feels like has a really powerful phoenix. Let's see what this one does. Three red red for a 4-2 flying phoenix. Has two and a red. Return nemesis phoenix from your graveyard to the battlefield. Tapped and attacking. Activate only during the declare attacker step. And only if you're attacking two or more opponents. So... It's super aggro phoenix that's conditional on you being aggro towards more than one person at a time. I'd say that's par, for, especially for phoenixes, that's par. Pack attack, two and a red for an instant. Attacking creatures get plus X plus O until end of turn, where X is the number of players attacking. Draw a card. Not bad. Not bad at all. Patron of the arts. Oh my god, this dragon noble dressed up in the looks like Jinx Monsoon's um pleather Oh, what was the name of that challenge? Anyway, this looks like Jinx Monsoon's dress. Two and a red for a 3-1 Dragon Noble creature. When Patron of the Arts enters the battlefield or dies, create a treasure token. It's okay, my mother owns the museum. Lol. Definitely stealing. Um, So a 3-1 for three, you get two treasures. Not too bad. Popular Entertainer for one and a red a legendary enchantment background. Commander creatures you own have whenever one or more creatures you control deal combat damage to a player. Go to target creature that player controls. Pretty good. Nobody wants to hurt the popular entertainer, so goading makes sense. I'd say that's uh, above average for red aggro. Want to goad as much as you can. Reckless Barbarian is one and a red for a Dragon Barbarian 2-2. Two, two. Sacrifice Reckless Barbarian and add two red mana. That's below average. Not great. I think it would be it would be at par if it had haste. Um Yeah. Shiny Impetus. Two and a red for an enchantment aura. This is the enchantment slash goad cycle. Enchanted creature gets plus two, plus two, and is goaded. Whenever enchanted creature attacks, you create a treasure token. So again, you want to enchant your opponent's creatures so that it can't attack you, but it has to attack. Yada, yada, you get treasure every time it attacks. Pretty good. I think all of these impetus cards have been above... Uh, par so far, including this one. Stirring Bard, three and a red for an 04 Dragon Bard with Defender. When Stirring Bard enters the battlefield, take initiative. Mantle of Inspiration, tap, tap, ins tap Stirring Bard, and target creature gains menace and haste until end of turn. That's pretty good. Defender that hands out haste and menace. At the first sign of danger, she breaks out the power cords, as the flavor text. One thing that, and maybe this is just because I like bards and I don't play red, but it's always weirded me out that they made bards red. 
They made the Bard class um, red and black? Red and green. Green I can see, almost. Um, I just don't... Maybe I just didn't play my Bard as an aggro bastard, so I don't associate Bards with aggro and damage. Storm King's Thunder for X, red, 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 uh, mythic instant. When you cast your next instant or sorcery spell this turn, copy that spell X times. You may choose new targets for the copy. Oh no. Well, this is 100% going into mill decks. Red, blue mill decks are pretty popular right now. In standard, at least. I mean, I don't. I'm assuming there's a um, commander version of it. This would be good with um, that guy from the Maestros, the leader of the Maestros in his day. Uh, next up, we've got Street Urgent, one in a red for a legendary enchantment background. Commander creatures you own have pay one to sacrifice another creature. This creature deals one damage to any target. That's pretty cool. Um, a little soft. I would say it's below par, depending on the situation. Because I like to play death touch decks and poison decks and so if you were to you know put this background in say a Finn the Fangbearer deck then you can have Finn the Fangbearer deal one death touch damage to anything by paying one mana and sacrificing another creature uh, which is going to instantly kill pretty much everything. Um, and it says any target, so you can even get it to do one damage to the player. Just keep racking up those poison counters. I think that's above average in, in, in those scenarios. I think just on the basis of dealing one damage to anything, slightly below par. Wash Buckler Extraordinaire. Look how badass this guy looks. Two and a red for a 2-2 two, two Dragon Rogue Warrior. Why does he get two? He's multi-classing. When, when Swashbuckler Extraordinaire enters the battlefield, create a treasure token. Whenever you attack, you may sacrifice one or more treasures. When you do, up to that many target creatures gain double strike until end of turn. That's pretty cool. I'd probably say that's par, like when everything, sh when all shakes out. I'd probably say that's par. It's fun. It's also got a ton of letters. Um, but yeah. Taunting Kobold. One red for an 01 Kobold with haste. Whenever Taunting Kobold attacks, go target creature and opponent controls. But even though it has zero power, you, uh, Want it to attack so that it taunts um, another creature. That's kind of fun. Pozo's heart was full of courage right up until it was full of elven steel. Oh no. So sad. Uh, next up we've got Tavern Brawler. Two and a red for a legendary enchantment background. Commander creatures you own have at the beginning of your upkeep... Exile the top card of your library. This creature gets plus X plus O until the end of turn, where X is that card's mana value. You may play that card this turn. That's pretty cool. So you get to access to one more card per turn, and you get to pump something, depending on uh, what that card's mana value is. Not too bad. I'd probably say that's about par. You like there's shitty versions of this and and there's excellent versions of this so the middle ground or some total is about par 
Next, we've got Thunder Wave. Two red red for a sorcery. Roll a d20. One through nine. Thunder Wave deals three damage to each creature. Ten through nineteen. You may choose a creature. And Thunder Wave damage deals three damage to each creature not chosen. So you can save one thing. If you roll 20, Thunder Wave deals 6 damage to each creature your opponents control. So 4 mana, and you're really hoping for 10 through 20. I think that's pretty great. I think that's above par. That's fun. This is going to get played quite a bit, I'm sure, especially in Commander. Fun board wipe. Uh, Tiamat's Fanatics, 4 and a red for a 4-3 Dragon Warrior with Haste and Myriad. That's pretty cool. Pretty cool, bow par, two-handed axe, Oh, red equipment. I don't know why I get so excited for other people's decks. I'm just like, oh, that would be great in this person's deck. Or, uh, anyway, two and a red for a artifact equipment. Whenever equipped creature attacks, double its power until the end of turn. Uh, and the equip cost is one and a red. Uh, it has an instant adventure on it as well. Sweeping Cleave for one and a red. Target creature you control gains double strike until end of turn. So send your axe on an adventure all by itself. Somehow, thematically, that's supposed to work. Not great flavor. Uh, so your axe walks away, grows legs, and, and goes on an adventure. And then you can cast it and use it on a creature. Tip it to a creature. Pretty good. I like it. I'd say above par. Wand of Wonder. This is the... Box Topper? No. This, there's some sort of promo version of this. Maybe it's launch day. Pre release event. Promo. Um, anyway. It's three and a red for an artifact. You can pay four mana to tap it and roll a d20. Each opponent exiles cards from the top of their library till they exile an instant or sorcery card, then shuffles the rest into their library. You may cast up to X instant and or sorcery cards from among cards exiled this way without paying their mana cost. Uh, if you roll a one through nine, X is one. If you roll a 10 through 19, X is two and a 20, X is three. You can potentially cast all three spells for free. Um, at the very least, you get to cast one of them for free. For four mana, that's not bad. Um, I think the more interesting thing is that uh, one, so one, you get a peek at some of the cards in your opponent's libraries. Two, they have to shuffle their library, so if they've already set up something, uh, you shuffle it away. Three, they don't get to cast those spells. And the rest of them that you can't cast, stay in exile. Uh, you may cast up to X instant and or sorcery cards from among cards exiled this way without paying. Yeah. So every time you pay the four and tap it, you get access to three more cards. Um, and your opponents have to do the whole shuffle de buffle -dee. I like it. Warehouse Thief, three and a red for a 4-2 Tiefling Rogue with two pay two and tap sacrifice an artifact or creature exile the top card of your library till the end of turn you may play that card so pay two and tap your four two to get access to one extra card per turn not great that's below par for sure uh wild magic surge oh there's delina there uh two red for an instant destroy target permanent and opponent controls its controller reveals cards from the top of their library until they reveal a permanent card that shares a card type with that permanent. They put that card onto the battlefield and the rest on the bottom of their library in a random order. Also, there's big giant mint scambu in the background. I need to see this uh, card art in a wallpaper, please, wizards. Uh, I think that's interesting. That's all I gotta say. It's interesting. Wrathful Red Dragon. Three red red for a 5-5 five, five dragon creature with flying.
Holding in a cough until I can get to the mute button is art form. Whenever a dragon you control is dealt damage, it deals that much damage to any target that isn't a dragon. That sounds pretty wrathful to me. I like it. Five mana for a five five flyer. This card's above par, for sure. For sure. Now uh, next up we've got Will, uh, Blade of Frontiers. One in a red for a one one human warlock, legendary creature. If you would roll one or more dice, instead roll that many dice plus one and ignore the lowest. Whenever you roll one or more dice, put a one one counter on Will and choose a background. So Will is just your default die rolling commander. All those cards that we talked about that make treasures and damage and exile cards, depending on what die you've rolled, like this is your guy. Definitely, definitely a good card for a particular strategy. Will's Reversal. Two and a red for an instant. Choose target spell or ability with one or more targets. Roll a d20 and add the greatest power amongst creatures you control. 1 through 14, you may choose new targets for that spell. 15 plus, you may choose new targets for that spell or ability. Then copy it, you may choose new targets for the copy. Interesting. Um, so it's a deflect and it's a deflect with a huge upside that's above par no matter which way you shake the tree uh young red Dra oh look at this guy he's having so much fun in this lava bath look how much fun he's having so much fun three and a red f for a three two flying dragon young red dragon can't block he can't be bothered to block because he's having so much goddamn fun in the lava hot tub. The, the bubbling hot tubs. Uh, he also has, I don't know why I said he. Uh, this dragon also has bathe in gold. One and a red for an instant adventure. Create a treasure token. And then he's going to melt it down and put it in his hot tub. It's a fun card. Not great. Uh, you've been caught stealing. One and a red for a sorcery. Choose one. Threaten the merchant. Each creature blocks this turn if able. Bribe the cards. You create a treasure token for each opponent who was dealt damage this turn. Not bad. I mean, two mana and force everything to block. Or so did I say four mana? Two mana and you can force everything to block. Or two mana and you can create up to three treasure tokens. Not bad. And that's the end of red. Say it. I don't know. I'm liking all these cards so far. I think a lot of this, I, I know that in standard format, I'm just going to click on this dragon having the most fun in his lava hot tub. Um, I know in the standard format that, uh, adventures in the forgotten realms wasn't super well received in general. But I really love all the flavor and stuff that Wizards brought to Magic the Gathering with the Dungeons & Dragons crossover. I understand that a lot of that is because I have knowledge and prior experience with Dungeons & Dragons. So it's okay if it's not for you. But I think that all of these the addition of initiative the addition of backgrounds um all of the choose your own adventure cards um the cycles of ancient dragons 
all of these things are really interesting nods to another thing I really love. And so it makes this thing that I really love even more exciting. Like when, when your favorite band plays a cover of another band you really love's best song. And they do it just as good, if not better, than the original band. It just feels good. No one gets hurt in that scenario. Maybe not does it better than the original band, because Magic isn't doing Dungeons and Dragons better than Dungeons and Dragons team does it. Yeah, so... Uh, 